My name is Cy Porter, and what we have here is a looped background. So the background will play for as long as I need it to. And it will have repeating landscape, but the landscape is so basic that it won't distract the viewer from the scene. And I'm going to show you today how to make a looped animation background in After Effects with parallaxing so that there's a sense of distance because things further away will move slower than things closer. So, and also, uh, I make my free tutorials to get the word out about my animation projects and you can see them for free at solomation.com if you watch those my stats go up and it encourages me to make more free tutorials so please take the time to check out uh, some of my animation work i started with three main land masses here is the one that is the furthest back very wide image dimensions and here are the other two this is the nearest land mass and this is sort of the one in the middle if you go to filter and you go down to other and you choose offset you can see how it will offset the the image let's hit control n to create a new image so that I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to make it 2 inches high, 16 inches across. Quickly draw in, you know, a real basic idea of a landscape. So here's your landscape. Or, you know, you can use it for clouds or ocean waves. And if you go to filter, other, and offset, say that much, this is going to be an easy one because the seam is hardly visible at all. And if I go over here, I can see that what were the edges of the image are now here within the picture. If I go in and take away that seam, then basically on the left and right side of the image, I now have what is called seamless tiling. So I can go ahead and save all my images and they're ready to bring into After Effects. I started a new composition in After Effects and I'll go ahead and bring the front one in to the composition. I'll make that a 3D image. I want to change my view to two camera views. I want to go ahead and make a new camera. I'm going to go ahead and click on the camera and hit P for position. Click on the stopwatch, go to the X axis and move the camera to the left. I'm going to move the current time indicator to the end of the sequence and then I'm going to move the camera to the right. And so basically from the beginning to the end the camera moves from left to right. I want to go back to the beginning and I want to go to the first image file with the X axis. I'm going to move it so it's roughly lined up so that its center is roughly right in the middle. And over here you can you can see what it looks like in the camera. And in the Z axis, I'm going to go ahead and bring that back a little bit. Bring that down, kind of get it all lined up and if you notice the center of the image is basically lined up with the center of, of the camera's view. <clears throat> and the current time indicator is at the beginning. I'm going to hit D for duplicate. Then I'm going, going to use the pick whip to parent the duplicate image to the camera. I'm going to select the camera. Hitting O will take the current time indicator to the end of the camera layer. <clears throat> or you can just take the current time indicator and move it to the end of your animation. It looks exactly like it did a second four from the active camera view because your duplicate layer has followed the camera. So I can go ahead and unparent 
the duplicate layer from the camera. Now, if I go back, you can see that that first layer leaves the frame as the camera moves, and then the duplicate layer comes into frame towards the end of the sequence. And what we have here is an animated sequence that looks exactly the way it did when it started. But what about the middle? So I'm going to select the image layer and its duplicate, and I'm going to take the current time indicator to roughly the middle of animation, and I'm going to click on the right troll handles of the left image. With both of them selected, I'm going to drag them, and it will scale it horizontally so that both of these images will equally stretch, and I'm going to have them meet in the middle. Let them overlap. So basically, I have a constant landmass that looks exactly the way it did at the beginning as it does at the end of the animation. One of the duplicate images I'm going to select, and with the z-axis I'm going to move forward just a little bit so that as the camera passes, sometimes you get digital artifacts if the images are exactly lined up on the z-plane that is how far they are away from the camera but if you have one one of the duplicate images a little bit closer you don't get that digital artifacting and with that I have my first loop LAN set up so if I rendered this now I would end up with a video clip that I could bring into my video editor and I could drop in as many times as I wanted lining them up one after the other and it would be a loop it would it would appear to continue continuously continuously play with no seams and no noticeable breaks in the footage i want to show you what it looks like once i get all the land masses and trees and telephone poles into the scene so you can see I've, i have some telephone poles in the foreground and I have the land masses here, and then I've added in trees that will do a lot of parallaxing because some of the trees are m much closer to the camera than others. Remember, you have the power to encourage me to make more of these when you hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.